And can you just share a little bit about why you're here today lobbying on the state uh, the state house lawn? Yeah, I'm here because I've been in the state house a lot in the past year and I've heard a lot of excuses. I've heard them say we're too busy. I've heard them say we don't have all the information. And I'm here because I want to respond to that and I want to tell them that we do have the information. We are moving too slowly and we need to see action in our generation because our planet is being destroyed by human actions. That is the truth. And we have the power to stop that in our state and all over the world. Thanks, Miriam. And um, can you talk a little bit about this event today, who you've brought out and who you're hearing from and um, you know what you hope to accomplish with this event? Yeah, so the Vermont Youth Lobby's goal is to bring together young people and lift up their voices and to get action on climate change. And so today we have about 400 to 500 students from schools all across Vermont, from the Northeast Kingdom, from the south of the state, from right here in central Vermont, all here to learn, to learn from each other, to talk, to hear speeches, and ultimately to make our voices heard to demand action on climate change from our legislators. I'm Molly Levy, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm here because I feel like as young people, it's often really, really difficult to have our voices heard, especially with government and could feel like we're very powerless in these situations. And I think this event is just a great way to meet people and kind of amplify our opinions. Um, I'm Kamaria, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a freshman at South Burlington High School. And I should be at school right now, but I feel like this is, climate action is such a big thing that we need to have a voice in, and it's really hard, like Molly said, to have a say when you're a teenager and you don't get taken seriously. And it's just a way to be like seen and get your voice and, and ideas spread. Uh, hi, my name's Earl. Um, I use he, they pronouns, and I guess a big reason that I'm here is it's really cool to meet a lot of like-minded people my age who are interested in climate action and climate justice. Um, I guess it's, it is, not only is it hard to have our voices heard, it's hard to like get involved, and there are a lot of different organizations here that are amplifying youth voices, and it's very empowering, and I feel very happy to be here. Hi, I'm Nico. I use she, her pronouns. I go to Burlington High School. And I'm here today because uh, we are the future. Children are the future and we need a home. And being here today has shown me just how many people, how many kids are involved and care about this. And I've seen that even just me talking to people has spread information and has been able to help us. I'm a community organizer with 350 Vermont and we're here just to support Youth Lobby and all of the kids here in the state. Um, part of like the whole idea of this entire day is to bring people together and learn about all the opportunities that we can build a movement in Vermont and kind of advance climate climate initiatives forward. So, And what does 350 do for Vermont? Yeah, so 350 Vermont is a climate justice org. So what we really try to do is center the intersection of the climate crisis and like economic and racial oppression and, and inequality. And what we kind of assume as our theory of change is that that's actually the best access of, of making and building like real political power and that the real solutions out of a climate crisis aren't say like incentivizing markets to like make a gradual shift that companies can make profits off of. It's about like really building power and building a people centered movement um, that can demand the changes that we need to see. So. And can you speak a little bit about just the value of having a rally on the state house lawn? Like, why rally out here? Why, you know, what, what's the intended impact today? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a beautiful day out. It's just, uh, it's going to be fun. Um, part of having a rally is building community, you know, and so we're making a statement externally to the to the state house and our legislators. But what we're also doing is making friendships and um, networking and connections so that we can build the movement and like take the energy of today and kind of bring it back into our communities and really like build the power from there. So, yeah. Do you want to just share a bit about why you're here today and why rally on the State House lawn today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I work for VPIRG, the statewide environmental organization, and young people have always been so critical and key and um, central to VPIRG's work and environmental work in, in general. Um, it's so motivating to see young people 
taking time off of school and getting the resources that they need to know what's happening at the national and state level of, of politics and paying attention to what elected officials are doing with the resources we have as, as a state and the power they have right now. And um, they're, they're incredible. They're really motivating and um, they definitely know what they're talking about and they're not afraid to to put it in the exact terms that the climate crisis needs to be put in and um, I just really applaud them and I, I, I am a young person but it, it's another thing especially to see folks that are students and under the age of 18 and can't vote yet and this is how they show up for their community and their their futures so it's great. Sorry. Um, can you talk a little bit about what VPIRG is trying to do this session and you know, how you're trying to impact legislation yeah. Uh, currently? Yeah, so VPIRG really kind of serves as a watchdog in the state house. Um, we follow policy and I personally work on the environmental team, so protecting Vermonters from toxic chemicals and zero waste issues. We're really excited to see the bottle bill, H-158, that um, passed in the house couple weeks ago um, with overwhelming support and now it heads to the Senate. Uh, we need the full benefits of the program of, of our bottle bill. It works really well at turning cans into cans, bottles into bottles, and given the acuteness of the plastic crisis, we can't opt out of any ways that we can be responsibly collecting our waste and doing real recycling. So I'm really excited about that. Um, as well as the Affordable Heat Act is something that we've been really pushing for and um, equity is at the forefront of it and the price should not fall on Vermonters um, to address this. It really is going to be um, the people with the resource and the, and the capacity to make this transition, they're going to do that. And that's what that bill is about, which we're excited to see passed. <laughs> yes. So I was saying that I was a global studies major and I definitely thought that after college I would work for a big international nonprofit. And I've actually, I'm so glad that I found VPIRG because I found that state politics is this really empowering sweet spot of um, local solutions. The proximity that we have to our legislators here in Montpelier is really special and something that when you take advantage of, it has an impact of passing legislation for a state. You know, right now if we ban a list of toxic chemicals from period products and personal care products that's protecting hundreds of thousands of Vermonters um, on that issue but also it makes it easier for other states to follow suit and pass something similar in the ripple effect so it's it's really exciting to be able to work on this level of things and um, I feel like I'm truly making a very big impact with the work that I do and I'm so young and it's it's really cool. You mentioned a, a bit of climate uh, related legislation there you, I can tell from your sticker, are aware of the youth climate uh, lobbies rally on the state house lawn today. What is the value of rallying on the state house lawn, and what's the importance of that work for the work that you're doing? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I think a lot of people wonder what's the value of protest, what's the value of rally. Um, I think there are two two primary things um, that are valuable about, about protest and rally. First, as a participant in the protest and rally, you're with your people. You don't feel alone if you're frustrated about something that's going on in the world, if you're having an existential crisis about the climate, for example. You're with people who share that concern and you're taking action together and it renews a sense of hope. Um, from the perspective of a legislator, um, one of the reasons I'm here is for our youth. I have children who are 20 and 18 years old and um, they're not particularly hopeful about our climate future. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to run um, for office and, and serve in state legislature, especially when our federal government isn't taking the action that we need to on the climate. As you're probably aware, the youth climate rally happened on the State House lawn today. Can you talk a little bit about just the importance or value of rallying on the State House lawn? What does it mean to you as a legislature, as a, as a legislator, when um, people, especially youth, come to the State House to share and amplify their voices and their concerns? Oh, it is so heartwarming, and it is the perfect visual reminder of the issues that are facing Vermont and facing our nation, and that we need to take action. So of course, the best place to tell folks, to tell this state that we need to take action is right on the State House lawn. Um, I'm actually, I feel very privileged that our committee room is right on the front end of the building, so we get to see everything that is happening from the child care rally that happened the other day to today's rally on climate, and even when the outright youth were here on Trans Day of Visibility and speaking truth to power. Um, but specifically to the piece, piece around youth, um, 
It is so important when we talk about the climate crisis that youth are the ones who are really leading on this charge. Though it is a majority of adults who hold the power to actually enact that change, our youth understand that the climate crisis is directly impacting them, their future, and the sustainability of this earth. And uh, it's amazing seeing them come through the hallways, both with their very creative signs. Um, we need creativity when we're coming up with these bold solutions. Um, but also that confidence to be able to talk directly to legislators. Um, it is such an, uh, an honor and a privilege to be able to have those conversations as well as opening up possibilities for the average Vermonter to come into the people's house and understand that it truly is for the people. Um, I think that's what comes up most often is folks are like, oh, it's really intimidating. It's a big building, the Golden Dome. It kind of feels like a museum. And then they show up and they're like, wait, there wasn't security right out the door. Um, I could literally walk into any committee room and listen. I can meet directly with my representative. Uh, it shows the ways that we can directly uh, engage with democracy. You may have noticed that there was a rally on the State House steps today led by youth activists looking for climate action. Um, what's the value of that work specifically to you know youth-led climate activism, but also just in general, um, you know, rallying on the State House steps? How does that work impact what you do and your colleagues do here in the State House? Yeah, it's. Uh, I will say, again, from a logistical point of view. It's great to have groups right here because our days don't have a lot of room for, like, there are hundreds of people I would love to meet with and talk to and I just don't always have time. And so as silly as it may sound, like having folks right here sharing what they're asking for, what they're worried about, what they want to have happen, and we can just walk outside and listen to them, I, it, it sounds... It's significant, I'll just say. It may not sound significant, but it is. Um, I was really lucky today to meet with a group of students from CVU, which is the high school in my district. I also happen to be school board chair um, for our school district. So it was so great to, on my lunch hour, <laughs> stepped outside um, along with a bunch of other representatives from uh, within our school district. And we got to hear from the kids about why they were here and what they were worried about, um, certainly youth coming here, sharing their concerns about the climate. I mean, it has, it's been said a million times, but we're talking about their future. The things that need to be done and need to be changed are in order to give them a future, essentially, um, and their children and children's children. Like, it's all about the future. And so it's just too easy for folks who are like, my age and older, maybe, <laughs> to say, like, I don't know, we're doing, aren't we doing okay? Like, no, we're not. And they know it because they, younger people, feel a different kind, a different level of anxiety, I think, than, than, than we may. So it's really, really important to have them speaking up. And they bring questions that we don't know the answers to. And that's so important, too. Um, so having them speak up, A, is, is super important, and having them do it right here on the State House lawn. There's a real uh, utility to that. Thank you so much, Angela. What is the value of rallying on the State House lawn? What does it mean to you as legislators when a group comes together to advocate for an issue on, uh, and comes to the State House to, to amplify their voices here? I can speak. <clears throat> I can speak. Uh, so this is really the first year since I've been here because I, I was elected during the pandemic. So I was in my home office the first year. We came back in February, but it, to a very um, diminished um, outside presence um, within the state house. And there just wasn't that kind of activity. So I've just been so excited because like, this is why I'm doing this. Is, and it's especially exciting when there are young people who are here, who are asserting things <clears throat> about what they care about or their fears, um, and what they want us to do about those things. Um, I just, it, it, it makes me feel like, okay, th this is why I'm here, just a good reminder. Um, and I, and so I'm very energized by it. And, and, um, and it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be young people, but I mean, we had a, we had a trans visibility day here um, and, it, it, I mean, I will remember forever some of the speeches that 
that some of these kids made, some of them 11 years old. Um, and so I am, anyway, for me, <laughs> it, it is a great reminder, a very visceral one of like, this is why I'm doing this. That's so true. Whether it's what um, Tiffany was just talking about or whether it's uh, a, a small group of students coming to be honored for their accomplishments in the community or for winning a sports uh, event or uh, a group of students from another country or um, uh, a group of students from the Boys and Girls Club around Vermont uh, and actually a, a Burlington uh, young woman won um, that award this year, Burlington Girls and Boys Club Youth of the Year, and she's going to be advocating for um, mental health. Her name is Kate, and I don't know if I remember her last name, but anyway, I think that, you know, those things are, it's really important for us to see um, people organizing and caring, and it's also really important for people who care a lot about issues to see how much we care about them.